ما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في شأن حق حبيبه مقبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأصحاب سيدنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم وصل عليه صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا رحمة للعالمين after praising Allah Taala and asking him to send salutations, peace and blessings upon our noble Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Barak wa I'd like to welcome you to our final lecture of this uh, Blessed Ramadan al-Mubarak. Um, it is uh, quite sad that Ramadan al-Mubarak is leaving us uh, once again from our lives. We are about to bid farewell to this blessed month of Ramadan, this blessed month of Allah. This blessed month that brought in to us mercy of Allah, His forgiveness and glad tidings of the fire or freedom from the fire of hell. And we pray that we have achieved that, inshaAllah. But what lies ahead of us is the rest of, the rest of our lives. And that is, and the question that we should be asking ourselves now that this time next week, the month of Ramadan will have left from our lives. What kind of lives are we going to continue with? Are our lives going to go back to the way they were before the month of Ramadan? Or have we made certain <coughs> resolves within our hearts and minds? Have we made certain pledges with Allah Ta'ala that, Ya Allah, I'm not going to go back to those sins that I was committing before? And so, our ibadah within the month of Ramadan, our focus on Allah Almighty within the month of Ramadan will dictate that. The acceptance of our amal during the month of Ramadan will dictate <coughs> what kind of a life we will lead outside the month of Ramadan. Once there was a, a teacher whose a student asked him, Oh my beloved teacher, how is it that I know that my ibadah has been, has been accepted? The ibadah that I did during the month of Ramadan, the staying awake at night, listening to the glorious Quran, the fasting during the month of Ramadan, the sadaqah that I gave during the month of Ramadan, all of the good deeds that I have done during the month of Ramadan, and everything that I did within those 30 days, how do I know that they have been accepted, those ibadat that I was doing? How do I know that they were accepted? And his teacher said to him that if you continue those actions outside the month of Ramadan, if you have continued, if you have kept the momentum up relating to those actions outside the month of Ramadan, then know that your, your actions have been accepted by Allah. Know that your a'mal have been made qabool in the sight of Allah you have been accepted as being the one who has been granted forgiveness of Allah Almighty but if you are going back to your old ways after the month of Ramadan has gone then we have not fully understood what this month was about we've not fully taken in and appreciated why Allah Almighty gave us this blessed month and we need time to detox ourselves from our phones from certain addictions from other things and Ramadan Mubarak is exactly that where for 11 months we are busy <coughs> distracted by the adornments of the world we are distracted by things that sometimes distance us from Allah <coughs> Ta'ala the Ramadan Mubarak and these 30 days that Allah Almighty grants us it allows us to come back and once again draw that connection and relationship with our Creator Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala it brings back our purpose of life we get to understand what our purpose of life is and so we know and we this is quite a popular thing that we are fully aware that the shaitan the shayateen are locked up during the month of ramadan and then they are then released straight after the month of ramadan leaves they are once again released into this world do we give in to the shayateen as soon as the month of ramadan leaves us is a question we have to ask ourselves. This was a guard that we created, a shield that we created. <coughs> Fasting was a shield. Your ibadat were a shield. This was a jannah that you formed and formulated and built and structured for those 30 days. Are you going to allow that shield to then crack and break as soon as the month of Ramadan leaves you? Is a question we should be asking ourselves. And so why is it that people fall into sin straight after, immediately after? It's not even a week after, it's not two weeks after, it's not three weeks after. 
It's because of the mindset that we have about the month of Ramadan, what we have made the month of Ramadan, and what we have rendered it within our minds. And so there are a few verses of the glorious Quran that I want to bring to your attention, inshallah, relating to how the shayateen and how the shaytan himself, how he likes to trick an individual. And Allah Almighty, it's his mercy and his ni'mah that, that through the blessed Quran, through this glorious Quran, Allah Almighty has given us a way that how we can protect ourselves, ourselves from the trickery of the shaytan and the tribulation that the shaytan brings to us. I want to bring to your attention verse number 119 of Surah Al-Nisa. Allah wa ta'ala is quoting a promise and a pledge that the shaytan makes to him. A challenge that the shaytan makes to Allah wa ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا أضلنهم ولا أمنينهم ولا آمرنهم فلا يبتكن آذان الأنعام ولا آمرن فلا يغيرن خلق الله. He says the shaytan says this to Allah تبارك وتعالى and look at his audacity that Allah Almighty created him and yet he comes and he makes his challenges before his creator subhanahu wa ta'ala before our creator subhanahu wa ta'ala that i will surely lead them astray this is his first step that he is going to lead us astray he is going to use our own experiences to draw us away from allah everyone has their own journey to allah wa ta'ala everyone has their own tribulations everyone has their own tests some people have financial restraints some people have familial problems, family problems that they have. Some people have problem with their spirituality. Some people have, are enveloped and drowning in their depression about all of these things. So people have their own different types of problems that they are undergoing. And the shaitan uses those to guide a person away from Allah. So I'm going to lead them astray, Ya Allah. He says, Wala and what's been used here is the lam of ta'kid at the start and the noon at the end, which gives full emphasis. He is pledging and he is with full intent saying that, Ya Allah, I'm going to lead these people astray. I'm definitely going to do it. <coughs> There's no option about it. <laughs> and then he says, and I will fill them with false hopes. I will lead them astray first of all. I will continue whispering in their ears. I will lead them astray and then I will then fill their hearts with false hope. They will feel that this direction of life that I have taken, this avenue of to build my financial state and grant me a higher financial state in society, he will use that avenue to fill that person with false hope. That this is a way that you can take in order for you to grow in terms of materialistically in terms of worldly gains you can grow, the shaitan will use that to his advantage in order for him to lead you astray. And so he will fill you, fill you with false hopes. He will grant you pleasure from places. And the fact is that that pleasure will be your false hope as well. He will show you things in a certain way that you feel that you are doing a good thing. But he, he will fill you with ostentation and showing off and arrogance within your mind and heart such that what you are doing actually is taking you away from Allah wa ta'ala and not leading you close to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is what he says, that I will fill their minds and hearts with false hope. I will do that. And then he says, He says, I will surely lead them astray, I will fill them with false hope and I will surely command them. I will be over the, in command over them then. You have allowed Allah Almighty during the month of Ramadan to command over you. He asked you to fast, you fasted. He asked you to stay away from food and drink, you stayed away from food and drink. He asked you to stay away from backbiting and gossip and all of these things. You said, Ya Allah, I'm going to stay away from it because you're asking that of me. He asked you to give your sadaqat, sadaqatul fitr, in particular within this month of Ramadan. And you said, Ya Allah, I'm going to give my sadaqatul fitr. Ya Allah, I'm going to be kind to my parents. <coughs> Ya Allah, I'm going to show affection to my spouse. Ya Allah, I'm going to show kindness and affection to my children. I'm going to do all of this, Ya Allah, because you've asked me to do so. And so who is in command over you? You're doing this because Allah asked you to do so. You're doing this because this is what causes, inshaAllah, the pleasure of Allah. But 
But as soon as the month of Ramadan leaves us, the shaitan says, I will put them back into my own command. They will be under my authority. They will listen to me. They will give in to me. And so right now, yes, they are regular with their prayers. Ya Allah, they are praying. They are giving sadaqah. They are doing all of these things. They are fasting because you've asked them to do so. But let the month of Ramadan finish. And I'm going to put them back into my command once again. This is how he is promising and pledging before Allah wa ta'ala that I'm going to take them under my own command and I'm going to take them under my authority. Ramadan al Mubarak, these 30 days that we have been granted and that have passed passingly, we have passed through the month of Ramadan, swayed through the month of Ramadan very, very quickly. And we've heard it on many, many occasions people are saying that Ramadan is passing us very, very quickly. How do we know, you know, what we've done? Has it actually allowed us to achieve the forgiveness of Allah or not? But the fact is that the shaitan, he's made these promises that this month of Ramadan will end quickly. Once I am released, I will go back to commanding over these people. Now this shield that you have created, you have to make sure that you keep your guard up. The shaitan will try to test you again. The shaitan will try to drive you away from the masjid once again. He will try to make this world more beautiful for you so that you are distracted and you are diverted and your attention is diverted once again from Allah Ta'ala towards other things. This is a promise that he's making. And it's up to us then. And the wise individual will say what? He is the enemy of my creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the enemy to the purpose of my life within this dunya. He's my enemy. An open enemy. And Allah Almighty and it's his, it's his party that I want to be with. I want to be in the group of Allah wa ta'ala. And so I cannot give in to the shaitan. This is a battle that we are at with the shaitan at all times. And like when we go into battle and we know from the battle of Badr, the Prophet sallallahu he was a great tactician. Great military tacti tactician. And so he knew what he wanted to do and what his plans were for the battle of Badr. The enemy also knew. They look towards the strengths and the weaknesses of people, those enemies that are coming to kill them, coming to harm them. The shaitan is doing exactly that with our iman and our faith. He's doing exactly that. He is an enemy to you and he is a sworn enemy that will remain an enemy from the time that you are born into this world all the way until you die from this world. All the way until those sakarat al maut, those pangs of death come upon us, the shaitan will remain and he will he will use his trickery to try, try to divert you from Allah Ta'ala. He's going to do that. And he's promised that I'm going to do that. I'm going to take command over them. But it's up to us. We make the decision. We make the decision. Are we going to be people who are going to let, give in to the shaitan or are we going to stay away from him? Another thing that happens as soon as the month of Ramadan leaves is that we give in to our whims and our desires. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Glorious Quran, this is a question he asks the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala says, have you seen that individual who has made his whims and his desires his God? We know Allah to be one. We know that he is the only one worthy of worship. But look towards those people who have not taken Allah to be their God. They might say it with their utterances. They might say it with their tongue. They might say, La ilaha illallah. But actually, their whims and their desires are their gods. Why? Because when they put Allah on one side and their whims and desires on the other side, are they listening to what Allah wants them to do? Or are they going towards what their whims and desires want them? Or want from them? Have they given in to what Allah wanted them to do? Or have they given in to their whims and desires? And so look upon those individuals who have completely distanced themselves, forgotten about Allah Ta'ala, and they have given in to their whims and desires. And so this is another thing that we have to be very, very careful about. As soon as the month of Ramadan leaves us, are we going to go back to what our whims and desires and going back to them commanding over us? Or are we going to remember that I was in worship of Allah Ta'ala constantly throughout the month of Ramadan? I stayed focused on Allah Almighty during the day and during the night. He was my <coughs> Rabb. I thanked Him for things. I 
spent my time seeking forgiveness from Allah Taala. I spent my time trying to earn his his pleasure and his rida. Am I going to now change that and shift that towards pleasing my own whims and my desires? It's all about questioning and taking ourselves into account into accountability. Taking ourselves to account as to what kind of life we want to live after the month of Ramadan has left us. We have to ask ourselves those questions. So do we want to make our gods, our whims and desires that lie within us? Or do we want to make Allah and keep Allah Almighty our God who we, who we are going to inshallah continuously try to gain the pleasure of inshallah and wa ta'ala. Another thing to keep focused on is this momentum that we have created during the month of Ramadan of ibadat. We may not continue all of it outside the month of Ramadan. But there's something that we will definitely take from our month of Ramadan. And everyone's answer will be different. So fasting we have done during the month of Ramadan. It's not to say that outside the month of Ramadan every single day we have to fast. But there's something about the month of Ramadan that you will take with you. And you have to promise yourself that this is something that I'm going to do all year round. Whether that is giving sadaqah. The Prophet said, خَيْرُ الْأُمُورِ أَوْسَطُهَا that the best of all matters are those that are done in small amounts, moderately. Now you have given sadaqah, <coughs> much sadaqah during the month of Ramadan. Many would have given their zakat during the month of Ramadan. But outside the month of Ramadan now, not at the scale that you were giving during the month of Ramadan, but on a much smaller scale, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, you decide that I want to give some sadaqah to the poor and to the needy. I want to give some of my wealth and some of that which is beloved to me, I want to give that in the way of Allah wa ta'ala. This will constantly cleanse your wealth and inshallah it will draw you closer to Allah wa ta'ala because the reason why you did it was for Allah. The reason why you did it was for Allah wa ta'ala. And this sincerity and this lillah here you built during the month of Ramadan. Again, it wasn't for Ramadan, it was for outside the month of Ramadan. It was for outside. So we don't want this pattern to continue. Of Ramadan comes, we do our ibadah, and we give many, many fold, and we recite much Quran, but then outside the month of Ramadan, we go back to our lives again. Only for the month of Ramadan to come again, we do exactly the same thing, and then return to our lives again. This is a pattern that is reoccurring within our lives. We have to get away from this. We have to use the month of Ramadan to, inshallah, better ourselves for the rest of the 11 months. And not just for the 11 months, but for the rest of our lives. Another example is the quran al majid Tonight, inshallah, is the 27th night. Not just within the, the Rawi prayer, but many of us will be completing the quran al majid ourselves. The recitation that we have been making throughout the month of Ramadan. Many of us will be ending <coughs> that recitation tonight as well, possibly. But then when the 27th night finishes, we feel like, okay, the recitation of the Qur'an, that's it now. I don't need to recite until another year comes. So make an azam, make a resolve in your heart and mind. That, okay, I'm not going to be finishing a juz a day after the month of Ramadan finishes. But I'm going to be finishing at least a day, a, a page a day. I'm going to be reciting a couple of verses, reciting their translation and reciting a commentary on them. Understanding what Allah Almighty wants from me. And so if a person does that, imagine he did that for the 365 days. Minus the days for the month of Ramadan. Imagine a person did that. How much closer would he be to Allah ta'ala until the next Ramadan got to him? Now making a target from this Ramadan to the next Ramadan, these 11 months I have got that Allah Almighty has granted me. What is it that I want to do and what do I want to have achieved before the next Ramadan comes upon me? What do I want to have achieved? before the next Ramadan Al-Mubarak comes upon me. After the month of Ramadan ends, Allah Almighty calls upon us to say that you must make the takbir of Allah. You spent your Ramadan reciting the takbir, saying Allah, but constantly hearing it in the salah, saying it to yourselves. On the eighth day, Allah Almighty also orders us that you recite Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Wallahi alhamd, isn't it? These are takbirat that we recite on the Eid day. Because Allah wants that just as you were reciting Allah Akbar during the month of Ramadan, you also do that on the Eid day. The Eid day is not a day of disobedience of Allah, but it's a day when your connection with Allah Almighty is still intact. 
your relationship with Allah wa ta'ala is still there. And the day has not distracted you and diverted your attention towards anything else. So that you can be thankful to Allah Almighty for His ni'mas that He has granted you. <coughs> Sing the praises of Allah. Recite the taqbirat, recite the glory of Allah Taala, and be thankful to Allah Taala for what He has granted you. And that Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar that you are constantly saying, it's a way of doing shukr to your Creator Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and saying to Allah, Ya Allah, thank you for what you have granted me. Thank you for all of the ni'mas that you have granted me during the month of Ramadan, outside the month of Ramadan, if we are not able to count the ni'mas that Allah Almighty has granted us, then is it not only fair that we spend at least moments within our life, <coughs> moments within our day, a few moments sitting on our own saying, Ya Allah, thank you for what you have granted me. Looking towards our children, looking towards our parents, looking towards the homes that we live in, Looking towards the food that we eat and saying, Ya Allah, thank you for what you have granted me. Thank you for this, uh, this wealth of children that you have granted me, Ya Allah. Thank you for my parents that you have granted me, Ya Allah. And so just sitting there thinking and pondering over your uh, ni'mas that Allah Almighty has granted you. This is a thanks in itself. Pondering over the ni'mas of Allah. Thinking about your ni'mas that He has granted you. You were doing this during the month of Ramadan. This must continue then, inshallah, outside the month of Ramadan as well. We have to allow it to continue. I want to, inshallah, just now come to the last verse of the glorious Quran, and that was relating to the hizb of Allah Taala being the party of Allah, and what it means to be Allah Taala's party and not the party of the Shaytan. Allah Taala mentions. In the glorious Quran, towards the end of Surah Mujadala, Allah Taala says, "Istah wada alihim al-shaytan fa ansahum dhikr Allah. Ulaika hizb al-shaytan, ala inna hizb al-shaytan hum al-qasirun." Allah Taala says that the shaytan has taken hold of them. Those people who have given into the shaytan, that command that he was talking about. That command that he will take over us, he has taken command over, over them, causing them to forget the remembrance of Allah. <coughs> this is the first thing that the shaitan will do. He will remove and he will allow you to forget all of the ni'mas that Allah has granted you. What he will do on the opposite end will be what? He will remind you of all of the things that you don't have. Why has Allah not given me this? Why has he not given me this? Why did this happen today? Why did that not happen today? What he wants to put in your mind is what? Everything that Allah has not granted you, he wants to put that in your mind. But what Allah has given to you, he wants you to forget that. And this is what makes us ungrateful to our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what means this is what it means to have kufran al ni'am, to have disbelief and neglecting the ni'mas that Allah Almighty has granted us. The shaitan wants us to forget the remembrance of Allah. Because if you start remembering Allah, if you come to the remembrance of Allah Almighty, what's going to come to your mind? Allah has given me so much. He's given me this and He's given me this and He's given me this. And you will never stop. But Allah Almighty says what? That istahwada alayhimu shaytanu fa'ansahum fa'ansahum dhikrullah. That the shaytan has taken hold of them, taken command of them, causing them to forget the remembrance of Allah wa ta'ala. They are the party of Allah. They are the party of the shaytan, excuse me. These people are the Hizb al-Shaytan. Those people who have given up on their Lord and given into the Shaytan. They are the party of the Shaytan. And Allah Almighty then reminds us that surely the Shaytan's party is bound to lose. They might not see that khusran, they might not see that loss within this dunya, they might not see that here. But definitely towards the end of their lives, definitely towards the Akhirah, they will see what they lost out on being part of the party of the Shaytan. Being a party to him, giving him support within the dunya. Because remember, the shaitan works through people as well. Min al jinnati wal nas. He works through people and he works through, through, through the jinn as well. And so the shaitan has his support. Do not be a party to what the shaitan wants to do. The bloodshed that he wants to cause on this dunya, the tribulation he wants to cause on this dunya. Don't be part of that. 
And then towards the end of Surah Mujadala, Allah says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. This uh, verse is quite detailed, but I just want to go through a couple of points from this verse. Allah Almighty says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. La tajidu qawman yu'minuna billahi wal yawm al-akhiri yuwaduna man haada Allah wa Rasoolah walau kanu aba'ahum aw abana'ahum aw ikhwanahum aw ashiratahum ulaika kataba fi kulubihim al-imana wa ayyadahum biruhim min wa yudkhiluhum wa yudkhiluhum jannatin min excuse me wa yudkhiluhum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar khalidina fiha radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhum ulaika hizbullah ala inna hizballahi humul muflihun Allah tabarak wa ta'ala then says that you will never find a people who truly believe in Allah Almighty and the last day loyal to those who defy Allah and his messenger you're not going to find people in this dunya who are loyal to Allah and his messenger <coughs> and along with that are loyal to the enemies of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. They're going to be on one side, either the side of the shaitan or they're going to be on the side of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. This battle has continued since humanity started. Since the shaitan was accursed and since he had promised Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that he's going to take people astray and move them and deviate them from the remembrance and the obedience of Allah Almighty. This has continued for, for many, many centuries, many, many millennials. It has continued since the start of humanity. And so you're not going to find people who are truly loyal to Allah and His Messenger who are also going to be loyal to the shaitan as well. Even if they were his parents or his children or his siblings or his extended family, that person will not give in to them if they are standing on the other side of Allah wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And then it continues on, for those believers Allah Almighty has instilled faith in their hearts and strengthened them with a spirit from within him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the person makes his promise and this azam and this resolve to himself, that I'm going to stick with the party of Allah, I'm going to stick with what causes the pleasure and the obedience of Allah wa ta'ala. When a person makes that promise, then Allah Almighty instills that person with Iman and strength. Allah grants him strength. That person may think that it's impossible. My family are against me. My brothers and sisters are against me. My parents, my children, they're all against me. My, my, they want me to do something which is causing the displeasure of Allah, but I'm standing on this side on my own. <coughs> Remember Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Remember his, his Iman. His whole family, his tribe, his people, they were all against him. He was one man. He was a one-man army in its true sense, in its true meaning. But Allah Almighty had strengthened him. When it looks impossible, and when it looks like nobody is on your side, Allah Almighty will instill your heart and grant you strength from places that you have no idea. He will grant strength to you and faith to you and strengthen them with the spirit. And this ruh, according to some ulama ikram, it's, it's Sayyidina Jibra'il alayhi salam. Jibra'il alayhi salam comes and aids you. And he is sent by Allah Almighty, the Creator Himself. And then, what's the result of this? Those people who have this faith within their hearts, those people who have this iman within their hearts, what's the result of this? That He will admit them into gardens through which rivers flow. He will grant them Jannah. And then they will stay there forever. It's not going to be this, uh, this life that is just passing by us. It's not going to be this quick life. This short amount of time that we live on this dunya is going to be an eternal life. It's going to be forever and ever. And then Allah Ta'ala says, Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. They've spent a life of obedience to Allah. Trying to gain the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. So they use the month of Ramadan to do what? To gather up all of these habits, these good deeds, so that they can continue them throughout their lives. And when they do that, Jannah is for them. When they do that, Iman and faith and strength is with them, inshaAllah wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty will grant them that. And more than anything, Allah will grant them His Rida. There's nothing bigger than this, brothers and sisters. The Rida of Allah Almighty. When He says that He has granted you His Rida, there's nothing more than that. There's a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari where Allah Almighty will announce to the people of Jannah Have I given you this? Have I given you that? Have I given you this? And Allah Ta'ala, the people that are in Jannah, they will say, Ya Allah, you have given us everything. You have given us everything. 
And then Allah Almighty will say that, should I not give you anything more than this? And they will say, Ya Allah, you've given us everything. What is there left now? And Allah Almighty will grant them his rida. And that will be the greatest gift that they will be given by Allah Taala. So, radiyallahu anhum wa radu an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. For the short amount of tribulation that they went through in, in this life, when they leave from this life and go into the next life, what Allah Almighty has in store for them, Allah Almighty will only please them. They will have the rida of Allah Almighty. And Allah Almighty, they will be pleased with what they have, what Allah Almighty has in store for them. That is the Hezbollah in its true meaning. That is the party of Allah wa ta'ala. And Allah Almighty mentioned about Hezbo Shaitan, they are people of khasara, they are people of loss. Allah Almighty says about his party, they are bound to succeed. This is the party, this is the group, these are the people who are bound to succeed. Success they may see in this dunya through itma'inan al qalb, contentment of the heart with what Allah Almighty has granted them. And then later, inshaAllah, in akhirah, they will also have success and they will be honored on the day of judgment and then in Jannah as well. So this gift of Ramadan that we have, brothers don't lose it. Sisters do not lose this gift that Allah Almighty has granted us. This gift is leaving us now, this guest is leaving us now. We've spent this or, or time with this guest within the, the month of Ramadan. We have spent time in this month gaining this closeness to Allah Ta'ala. Do not allow this to be wasted. Don't allow this to be wasted. Only gain closeness to Allah Ta'ala so that you can be within that party that is successful before Allah Ta'ala. We pray that Allah Almighty grants us tawfiq as Saeed. We pray that Allah Almighty grants us that fastness within these last few moments and these last few days that we have within the month of Ramadan. And inshallah, after that as well, may Allah Almighty grant us all tawfiq as Saeed. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.